this is Matthew Armstrong and welcome to Transformation Talk. Uh, today I'm feeling very grateful and very blessed because I'm not only sitting in the Marriott Marbella Beach Resort in Costa del Sol, but I am also joined with world-renowned microbiologist Dr. Robert Young. And uh, if you haven't come across his work before, Dr. Young has pioneered this new field in nutrition and health that has helped millions of people uh, free themselves of disease and regain their health. So, thank you very much for joining us today, uh, Dr. Young. Nice to be here. Thank, thank you. you very much. Uh, can we just start with, uh, the, the, for anyone that hasn't heard it before mm -hmm. or hasn't come across your work, the, the fundamental, uh, fundamentals of the new biology? Okay, there's two tenets of the new biology. Uh, the first is that the human body is alkaline in its design. That means all facets are, are alkaline. When we're born, we're bathed in alkalinity. Our fluids, all of our blood, our saliva, uh, our interstitial fluids, they're all alkaline. So we're alkaline by design. That's the first tenet. The second tenet is that all functions of the human body, the human organism, are acidic. So breathing, thinking, uh, the process of digestion or eating, uh, all functions. You know, the use of energy, the consumption of energy, to run our bodies from the beating of our heart, all of these functions produce acidic waste products that if not properly eliminated can make us uh, tired and uh, eventually as they build up can make us sick as well. Okay, okay. How did you come to discover this? Well, over a process of about 40 years, uh, testing the blood of, of uh, some 40,000 uh, client patients in 72 different countries and then looking at over 500,000 samples of blood both uh, non-traditional which would be live and dry blood but also looking at blood quantitatively uh, using uh, traditional medical tests like comprehensive blood tests chemistries lipid panels urinalysis uh, liver panels, inflammatory markers like homocysteine, C-reactive protein uh, for diabetics, uh, A1Cs, uh, all of these different quantitative tests to substantiate the efficacy of looking at live blood and dry blood and how lifestyle and diet affects the quality of the blood and then how the quality of the blood determines the health and well-being and vitality of our organs and thus our organ systems and how they function. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, you, you said that there is like thinking is acidic, uh, breathing, can, can, that, can we also make the alkaline, have alkaline thinking, alkaline breathing? Well that's a function, so all thinking processes produce acidic waste products that can make us, th uh, that can make us sick or tired. Uh, thinking requires energy, and anytime we're using energy, we produce acidic waste products. Uh, eating requires energy, just to masticate the food mm -hmm. requires energy, and that produces acids right. from that energy consumed. And as well as breaking the membranes of the food, and as they break down, also produces additional acid. So eating can be highly toxic to our bodies for the main reason of eating then, or Hydrating is to derive electrical energy or potential to run our bodies on, but the actual process of eating and digestion uh, or the liquefying of the food, which can then be transformed into stem cells, uh, this, this process uh, can produce acids that, uh, if not properly eliminated, can cause damage to the tissues and eventually make us uh, sick and tired. Okay. So what's the solution? How do we uh, alkalize ourselves? Well, the, the solution is to, to understand this basic principle that we're alkaline by design and acidic by function. And that we have to be conscious of the, the effects of over-acidification. Uh, some of the stages of acidity that are expressed that when we start beginning to sense a, a fatigue or tiredness of the body, uh, that this is the beginning of, an, of the body not able to remove its own waste products. Right. Uh, when we have sensitivities or allergies, this is a second stage of acidity that we're 
progressing into a higher level of acidity to where we come into irritation or uh, mucus buildup, which is catarrh, which is the body's response to that excess acidity to bind up the acids so they don't break down more cells that can cause more tissue damage. To the point that if it continues, we go into stage four acidosis, which is an inflammatory condition. Any pain that we might have or aches that we have in our bodies, this is a condition of uh, a buildup of acidity that's quite significant that can lead to all kinds of symptomologies from fibromyalgia to lupus uh, to eventually, if it becomes even more serious, uh, to some degenerative condition. But after inflammation comes induration, which is the hardening of the tissues or the connective tissues and the hardening of our arteries, which can lead to stroke or heart attack, to um, uh, ulcerations. And then finally, stage seven acidosis, which incorporates all the degenerative conditions, uh, would be can the cancers, uh, the neurological uh, diseases that, uh, that are now uh, very prevalent in, in our society with increases of Parkinson's and Alzheimer's and, and in, particularly in children, uh, autism and attention deficit and hyperactivity. These are all the result of uh, tissue damage affecting various organs and uh, their function uh, due to an over acidic condition. So when we look at uh, all of this, I summarized it to there's only one sickness and one disease, and that one sickness and one disease is the over acidification of the blood and then tissues due to an inverted way of eating, living, and thinking. Our lifestyle and diet it, what is what impacts the quality of our life and the quantity of our life. And so uh, even though there's many stages or these seven stages, mm -hmm. there's actually only one disease, but within that one disease of acidity, there's de definite stages that are building up over time that can lead then uh, to uh, some very serious challenges. So we have to pay attention. We have to be conscious to you know the little aches and irritations or sensitivities because they can lead into inflammation and then induration, ulceration, and degeneration. If we don't pay attention and uh, to our bodies and take care of them, you know, they can come unraveled very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. there, there's a, uh, a big sort of misconception, and especially in the Western world, of what disease is and what symptoms are. Um, could you shed some light on that? Well, disease in the, in the traditional medical sense is, are the symptoms because there really is no disease. There's just states of balance and imbalance, and that's related to managing and maintaining the alkaline design of the body. Uh, and, it's, and it's very simple to do, and it's inexpensive to do if we understand how to manage that. It's like managing, let's say, uh, a saltwater aquarium, or managing uh, the pH uh, or the alkalinity of a swimming pool. Uh, it, it's critical. If, if the pH or the alkalinity of our bodies do not maintain that delicate pH of 7.365, which is just slightly over midpoint on a scale from 0 to 14, 7 being uh, the midpoint, we're slightly alkaline at 7.365. The body does everything it can to manage that as it's pushing out waste products, acidic waste products, through urination, through defecation, through respiration and through uh, perspiration. Right. These are the four channels of elimination. So the body has to eliminate these waste products. If they build up, this is when we experience not disease, but dis-ease, which is a symptom of the main cause of all disease, which is acidity. Right, right. That's another interesting thing you said about building muscle. Build, uh, our blood builds muscle, but not, not, pro not protein, not animal protein. Well, if, if you look at all the, the strongest animals in the world uh, and what they're eating, if you uh, look at uh, the healthiest humans, uh, here again, they are moving more to greens, more to grasses, green vegetables, green fruit. Uh, the healthiest animals, the strongest, like the silverback gorilla, like uh, the rhinoceros, 
like the, uh, the elephant. Uh, a lot of our bodybuilders have embraced this because they now realize that the quality and strength of their muscles is determined by the quality and the health of their gut or the core of their body, the small and large intestine, and that is determined by what they're eating, what they're drinking, and the quality of the food they're eating, specifically green foods and green drinks, which are foundational in building the stem cells that become our blood, and then our blood as it moves throughout the body into the tissues becoming new bone, new nerve, new muscle. It is the blood that becomes the new cell. And so that quality of the blood, which I've been studying now for close to 40 years, I have found is impacted by what you eat, what you drink, and what you think. And the focal point of that production of blood, or those stem cells, or embryonic cells that become the new erythroblasts and then the erythrocytes, or the red blood cells, begins in the crypts of the small intestine. So if that's been damaged or congested, then of course uh, you, you can't produce quality blood. And so, you know, bodybuilders in generally may look good on the outside, but they don't feel good on the inside, generally. Mm -hmm. Generally, they have bigger muscles, but not stronger muscles. Mm -hmm. and, and the reason for that is they're eating all this protein, you know, whether it's from animal protein or from vegetable protein, which is not serving them. Because this does not build the foundational cells. The foundational cells, uh, embryonic cells, are built with the light force that is carried by chlorophyll and encapsulated in a lipid membrane. And these cells then are what, that are created in the crypts of the small intestine are what become then our new mesoderms that become our new muscle cells. So uh, over and over again, we see that an alkaline vegan diet okay, uh, that is focused more on green foods, green drinks, green fruit, green vegetables, mm -hmm. is the ideal diet for the extraordinary, unique uh, energy, vitality, and health and fitness. Uh, it's a diet that I've been on for over two decades and have developed uh, and, uh, you know, feel very vibrant and healthy. You know, I run anywhere from five to ten miles a day. I swim two miles a day. Uh, I exercise uh, using what I call Yunga Yoga, which is using isotonic uh, aerobic uh, stretching type exercises anywhere from an hour to an hour and a half. Uh, you know, I consider myself, as others do that know me, to be not only healthy but very strong as well. And uh, as a 60-year-old man, uh, I feel as good as I did when I was a teenager. Maybe better. Mm. Definitely stronger. Yeah. Uh, and uh, if I, I, I believe that as I take care of my body, and God uh, willing, that, uh, that I can... Uh, continue to make right choices and avoid any serious accidents, uh, that if I can exercise on a daily basis and continue with my green lifestyle and diet, you know, you know the test is on yeah. to see how long you know, the body can literally last mm -hmm. uh, using uh, this type of an approach. Now there are other factors that come into play such as environmental factors, uh, particularly one toxic uh, environmental factor, which is electromagnetic frequencies, which we're all exposed to, yeah. which affect our health, whether we're on an airplane, being doused with 300 milligauss of radiation, mm -hmm. uh, to uh, cell phones, which is one of the most toxic uh, forms of acidity that, uh, that I compare to be, well, I don't mean, I, I, I compare it to cigarette smoking. In fact, it's actually worse than cigarette wow. smoking is uh, the use of cell phones and you have to be very very careful with them because they put out radiation that can seriously compromise that alkaline design of the body so these particular uh, contributing factors the level of stress mm -hmm. all of this uh, will determine the quality and quantity of life so there are other factors 
that go beyond just what you eat and what you drink, uh, but and what you think, but there's environmental factors can, that, that play a role too as well, which have to be considered. Yeah, and, yeah. And how do we buffer against that radiation, uh, especially in this day and age where there are nuclear reactors going off around the world, and then also the electromagnetic chaos mm -hmm. from the phones, the computers? It, yeah, you have, to, you have to protect yourself. You have to first recognize it as a threat mm -hmm. and understand that all of our air, our ground water, all of our uh, soil has been polluted with this ionizing radiation. And then you have to protect yourself, and there are ways to protect yourself, and the best way is to maintain an alkaline lifestyle and diet. Right. There are alkalizing supplements that help to neutralize uh, ionizing radiation, whether it comes from you know, a nuclear plant meltdown to a cell phone to a hair dryer. Hair dryers are probably one of the most toxic instruments that uh, put out anywhere from 20 to 40,000 milligauss of radiation. It's a, it's a very dangerous instrument. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, yeah, you, you just have to be very careful with, with, with uh, these. And I know a lot of women use these, but they're, they're just not something that should be used. You know, computer radiation to TV radiation to cellular uh, tower, you know, power lines, all of this uh, contributes to the electromagnetic field that can upset and disturb that delicate pH balance of our bodies. So, you know, taking things like extra magnesium in the form of uh, magnesium chloride or magnesium chloride, taking extra potassium in the form of uh, potassium chloride or potassium chloride, to taking extra calcium, taking extra sodium in the form of bicarbonates, like sodium bicarbonate, uh, taking iodine in the form of potassium iodide is something that can be very, very helpful in uh, protecting one against uh, ionizing radiation. In fact, I recommend uh, uh, one take 130 milligrams a day of potassium iodide. Uh, but salts, particularly the mineral salts of sodium, magnesium, potassium, and calcium are very, very important and should be taken on a daily basis to help manage the delicate pH balance of the fluids of the body, which ideally should not drop when we're testing urine below 7.2 or saliva below 7.2. These are things that, uh, that you can test using pH hydrant paper. It's inexpensive. You do it a few times a day. You can manage the pH just like you would manage a swimming pool pH. Uh, you can maintain the quality of the health and, and, and prevent the trans reverse transformation of body cells into bacteria or yeast. So you don't have to worry about bacterial infections or yeast infections, which are actually being born from within our bodies, uh, even though we can be exposed to uh, environmental bacteria or yeast, that's insignificant to the amount of yeast and bacteria that's created from within. Right. If we do not manage the internal fluids of the body, it's very simple when we look at it in, in uh, the metaphor that I've expressed in the pH miracle revised and updated, and of course, the original pH miracle, it's called the fishbowl metaphor. Mm -hmm. Starts out with a question, and the question is, if the fish is sick, what would you do? Would you treat the fish or change the water? Yeah. Well, the common sense answer is, of course, you know, the fish is only as healthy as the water it swims in, you change the water if the fish is sick. And that's true with the human cell. The human cell is only as healthy at its environment, as its environment. So we maintain that delicate alkaline environment. This is what maintains the quality of our health, which then makes life worth living, living longer. Yeah. You've, you've got this revised edition, and I know that it, you, you've said that the book is very, very different to your the previous PH Miracle book. It's a, it's a new book. Right. Uh, I wrote the PH Miracle. In fact, I, uh, my wife and I wrote this book in Marbella. Okay. Yeah, we came here for two weeks. We sat down. We, we, we wrote the book. We spent a lot of time you know, yes, at the pool, but in our rooms. Mm -hmm. We finished it, this was in 2001. It was published by one of the largest publishing houses in the world, uh, Time Warner uh, Publishing. Uh, our new book, The PH Miracle Revised and Updated, which was published in 2010, July, 
is published by one of the largest European and also world, one of the top mm -hmm. publishers, Hachette, out of Germany. And it's published in 27 different languages. Mm -hmm. So uh, this book is literally revolutionizing the biology and medicine worlds as we know it today. It's making people think differently about their bodies, mm -hmm. about how they work, making them look at their health and vitality more contextually mm -hmm. as a holistic approach rather than some specific approach. Rather than looking as, as, at disease as something specific, looking at disease as a symptom mm -hmm. of an imbalance in the alkaline design of the body due to the body's inability to remove its own waste products. Mm -hmm. So if you can keep the channels of elimination open, I believe this. If you can continue to remove the waste products that are developed on a daily basis uh, and maintain that delicate pH, the life expectancy should be about 150 years. Mm -hmm. Middle age should be 75. Yep. Now, that's in this and current environment. I mean, depending on your conviction and commitment to managing your health, using a biochemical approach mm -hmm. and treating your body in a holistic manner, okay? You know, who knows how long you can live? Uh, the aging process slows down significantly. For example, my pulse rate runs between 45 and 50. Mm -hmm. Most people are running their pulse rates in the 70s and 80s, twice as much. Their heart is beating twice as many times as my heart beats. Mm -hmm. That's very and, slow. and that makes a lot of difference. Let me give you another example. You know, we've got right now athletes that are doing things to increase their endurance. Okay? And they'll inject or infuse their own blood. It's called blood doping. Right. To get their blood hemoglobin up to 17 or 18. You don't have the blood dope. You just have to eat the greens. Mm. My hemoglobin is in the 18s. Okay. Okay. Very rare. Yeah. Very rare. My RBC count. Okay. Uh, excuse me. The hemoglobin is running 18. My RBC count is running around 5.2 to 5.4. And my hematocrit, which is the volume of the blood, is running in the 51 and 52 percentile. Yeah. Most people are in the 30s and 40s. Okay. So, you know, I can go and go and go and go. I don't require as much sleep, probably anywhere from four to six hours, because I don't have all that down repair time tearing up my body with acidic foods like beef and chicken and pork and fish, yeah. eating dairy products and breads and grains, eating fruits like pineapples and mangoes and literally destroying the inside of my body. You know, the focus is more onto the avocados. Yeah. It's more onto celery and spinach and broccoli and the green foods that manage and help to maintain that alkaline design. This is the food for those who really want to transition to your their body mm -hmm. to going from just ordinary to superhuman. Okay. Do you recommend an all raw diet or do you recommend some cooked food? Is some cooked food beneficial or should it be all raw and to get the, the electrical and nutritional benefits? Yeah, there, I, I recommend a 100% alkaline raw diet. Right. Uh, and preferably juiced or pureed. Mm -hmm. So it's all pre digested. Uh, can you eat some acidic food? Yes. Will it affect how you feel? Absolutely. Okay, uh, can you cook some of the food? You can warm it. You never overcook food. Generally, you run something like 118 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. This is not cooking the food, this is warming it. Okay. If you boil your food, you're gonna destroy the electrical potential of the food, and that's why you eat food. You don't eat food for calories. You eat food for its electrical potential. Our bodies are electrical. They run on electricity. In fact, that's why our body is salted with sodium, because sodium, the sodium ions, you know, you tasted your blood? Have you ever tasted sure. your blood? What is it? Does it taste salty? I don't know. 
salty, sweet. Kind of yeah, like kind of salty. salty. Yeah, what about your sweat? That's sweet. Well, okay, well, it should be salty. Salty, yeah. Okay, yeah, if it's yeah. sweet, you're eating too much <laughs> sugar, all right? Uh, it should be salty. Yes. Okay, so your tears are salty, your yes. sweat is salty, your blood is salty. So what's all this sodium? The ocean is full of salt. Mm -hmm. Could you imagine putting fish on a salt-free diet? I mean, it's literally insane. You wouldn't do it because you would literally kill the fish. Mm -hmm. Our bodies are bathed in salt. Okay. Okay? Salt becomes one of the major contributors to our health. Mm -hmm. It's something we should be eating. It's what keeps us alive. Sodium. I can just show you a little experiment here. Here's some, here's some water. This is my light bulb here. And if I put this probe in here, I can't turn on the water. But if I take this saline solution, I don't know if you can see this or not, but this is actually a sea salt. It's a liquid sea salt. You probably, you know, in the salt shaker, you see the rock salt. Okay? We can take this, uh, this liquid salt, okay, and there's two sources I get my salt. One source is 3,000 feet down off the coast of Kona, Hawaii, where we get where we where we draw up this mineral rich, sodium rich, magnesium rich, over 90 different minerals in this water. We pull it up, we desalinate it, and we create this this very, very tasty liquid mineral salt. Okay? The other source is the North Shore of the Great Salt Lake. And uh, look what happens. If I take this salt and I just take a couple of sprays here, what happens is I can actually create conductivity through the sodium ions and light up the light. That's lighting up. So the way we light up our life and our, the, the light that powers us, because our bodies run on light or life energy. The sodium, or the salt ions, sodium ions, are responsible for the transportation of all that energy, life force. Mm -hmm. So once again, we have water. Water is just a catalyst. What kind of water should we be drinking? Should be slightly salty. Spray that in, and boom. See, for someone who's losing energy, just a squirt of salt with a little water. You don't need to take any sugar, because sugar, if I put the sugar in here, mm -hmm. any form of sugar, if I put sugar in here, it turns the light on. Okay. Because it's a, it's a paradigm that most people think that you, you know, our systems run our cells run on glycogen, right? They don't. Right. Glycogen is actually a waste product of the body or the cell mm -hmm. using this electrical energy. Okay. So it's a byproduct. It's, it is not... Our bodies don't run on glycogen. Our bodies do not need any glucose whatsoever. Mm -hmm. The body needs four things. These are the four food groups. Mm -hmm. Chlorophyll, oil, yep. water, and salt. That's it. It's all the body needs. To build blood, to build, uh, to, to generate life force energy mm -hmm. to run our bodies. Okay, so we're going to get our salt from... from we get our we get our salt uh, uh, from se several different sources. The best source is the liquid salt mm -hmm. because it's immediately bioavailable. Yeah. Uh, the second salt uh, source would be like rock salts. Mm -hmm. You have Celtic salt, you have Himalayan salt, you have Hawaiian salts. I like the Hawaiian salts. Okay. Not because we make it. I like the Hawaiian salts because it has no chemicals in it. Mm -hmm. It has no pharmaceuticals in it. It has no human excrements in it. Right. It is literally pure, clean salt, not chemically treated, but it's a natural, white, pure salt mm -hmm. with over 90 minerals in it. Okay. You know, it's the best salt in the world. Um, but it's a crystal salt. It has to be put into a solution, where this is already in a solution. So we have it. We have it so you can shake it if you want. Yeah. In a in a rock, you know, in a crystal state, or we have it in a liquid state too as well. Okay. Yeah. And then our oils. What what's the best oils to get? Well, the best the, the reason why we eat oil, oil and I recommend about 150 milliliters of oil per 70 kilos of weight. Okay. So per, you, per day. Yeah. Per day. Yeah. You need to drink oil. I mean, you never run your car on it. 
on without oil. Yeah. Okay? So you've got to put the oils in, but the reason why you eat oil, and there are specific oils that you need to eat, is they are responsible, the oils are responsible for building the membranes that become our body's oils. Right. So that become our blood. Mm -hmm. So that's a lipid membrane. So that lipid membrane has to be flexible, has to be able to bend, and those are the unsaturated, polyunsaturated oils, particularly the omega-3s. My favorite is hemp oil. That's why I created this uh, omega-3, 6, and 9, yeah. uh, because I wanted to put into a bottle the best oils which would incorporate uh, the best potential for building and regenerating mm -hmm. healthy blood. And we see the blood counts go up, so yeah. we know it works. Uh, so the omega-3s come from hemp. Uh, it's the best source of omega-3. Uh, omegas, uh, then we have the flax, mm -hmm. which is second best, and then we have the borage oil, which is uh, the third best in this particular formulation. Good to know because most people get the oils from the cooked saturated uh, yeah. oils, which are... Obviously. Well, saturated oil means it's saturated with acid. Right. Uh, another word for acid chemically would be hydrogen ions. Mm -hmm. So polyunsaturated means that there are many unsaturations of hydrogen or acids, and that's another reason for eating good oils, such as the, as the polyunsaturated, because they can uptake hydrogen ions or acids and thus neutralize these toxins that could cause uh, ill health. Okay. So the third thing is the chlorophyll. Uh, where is the best source of chlorophyll? Uh, the best source of chlorophyll are the grasses. Barley grass, wheat grass, straw grass, dog grass, oat grass. Uh, we put them in a dehydrated form uh, that we call dark brock grains right here. So we've got them, we've got them in, a, in, a, in a powder so you don't have to always be juicing. Uh, but juicing greens, uh, the grasses, the green vegetables is another way to get your chlorophyll. And also an extraction or concentration of let's say alfalfa or wheat grass chlorophyll in a concentrated form is also very good too as well. Okay, okay, great. So we've got our oils, salts, uh, chlorophyll, and the fourth was? It's water. Yeah, I call it the COWS program. C stands for chlorophyll, oil for oil, yeah. O for oil, W for um, water, and S for salt. But the water we should be drinking is clear, pure, pristine, uh, low oxygen, low RP, high pH water at 9.5, uh, or a P of about negative 250 millivolts, which really is a representation of its electron concentration. Low oxygen, that's atomic, not atomic oxygen, but O2, so low O2, high O1. Mm -hmm. O1, or atomic oxygen, or nascent oxygen, is what it's called chemically, is what the body uses. And so we have a high O1, low O2 ratio with a low ORP, which means higher concentrations of electrons, lower concentrations of protons, and then the pH should be at least 9.5 on a scale from 1 to 14. 9.5 is, is the mark we're looking for to help to neutralize acidity of the fluids of the body, hydrate, saturate uh, that uh, alkalinity uh, in the liver, the kidneys, a lot of our filter organs that are trying to get rid of this acid that's produced from metabolism. Uh, from cellular transformation or breakdown, uh, from our diet, uh, from the environment. Okay. So where are we going to get this water from? Well, it uh, doesn't exist on the planet anymore. You have to make it. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're pulling it 3,000 feet down underground. Mm -hmm. So we're pulling it up just off the coast of Kona, Hawaii, and we're bottle, bottling it. It's called pH Miracle Water. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a pH balanced at 9.5 at a negative 250 millivolts. A low uh, O2, high O1, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, structurally it's running about three to five uh, molecules uh, per H2O molecule. So you've got about three to five clustered together. So very, very, uh, shall I say, uh, wet water. It's uh, transdermal. It's uh, very permeable uh, to the cell. You can drink more of this water uh, because it's, it's not clustered. Uh, in a 20 to 30 or 40 uh, molecule clustering, which is very typical of, of most water, bottled waters or waters that are on the market. Right. So very keen to uh, uh, making sure that this uh, water is, is properly uh, uh, prepared. 
you can also do things, uh, if you're not buying bottled water, if you don't have access to pH miracle water, you can also look at an ionizer. Mm -hmm. An ionizer which uh, you can hook up to any uh, sink or faucet uh, or, and uh, run uh, it through a process of ionization which will help break up the uh, clustering or the structures of the water, breaking it down to five to six molecules. Uh, this will create the wetter water and more permeable water. Uh, it will create, it also increase the, uh, the negative uh, uh, hydroxyl ions, so increase electron activity or uh, atomic oxygen too as well. And uh, you know these these machines, uh, uh, we have a you know, which we also manufacture, like the pH Miracle Mach 1. We have the, uh, the Miracle Max, uh, which is man manufactured uh, for us by Chanson. Uh, some of our own ionizers, uh, we have them, you know, priced anywhere from five to six hundred dollars U.S. up to, you know, two twenty-five hundred to three thousand U.S. Okay. And, but all these water machines all produce 9.5. Right, right. Okay. So, uh, they all produce a quality water. Mm -hmm. It just depends on whether you want the higher pHs and the lower pHs uh, for you know healing purposes. Yeah. Uh, but just the, the basic drinking water, you don't have to spend a lot of money mm -hmm. uh, on an ionizer. Uh, if you don't have the resources to purchase an ionizer, then you can use uh, you can structure water chemically using sodium chloride, potassium hydroxide, and magnesium uh, hydroxide to structure the water and lower the pH and increase the pH uh, of the, the water that way. Uh, but you'd want to run any water that you're drinking through a nanofiltration system. Right. And nanofiltration at approximately 0 .001 microns, so it takes out fluoride, right. it takes out lead, it takes out zinc, it takes, not zinc, but mercury, it takes out uh, pharmaceuticals. Mm -hmm. So you end up with a 99.9% .9 pure water. Okay. How about like mountain <coughs> spring water? Would, would that be okay? What kind of spring water? Like, that you're actually going to the source. It's coming out of a if you're going to the source, it's, it's been ionized uh, right. uh, with radiation. All, all of the water on the planet now is polluted. Right. Unless you're going down, you know, several thousand feet. Mm -hmm. uh, right. So it depends on the source of the water, but there's very little water on the planet that does not contain some level of toxicity, and particularly from uh, the pharmaceutical drugs, which have got into the water table. Yeah, yeah. So it's really about um, getting the toxins out through the four channels of elimination. And Absolutely. Then, and then putting the, the nutrition in with the, the, those, those four things, the oils, the chlorophyll, the salt, and the water. Right. Um, what, what's, what's some practical steps that like, if one of the viewers could do today to see big changes in a week? What could they start doing right, right now? To, well, you can uh, see the changes within 24 hours. It can happen very, very fast. And, and probably the most important thing that anyone has to do is change the water you're drinking. Mm -hmm. Start drinking alkaline water. Mm -hmm. It will make such a change in your overall life, in the way that you feel. It'll neutralize the acids of the stomach. It'll, it'll reverse the GERD or the acid reflux or the stomach pains. It'll begin the process of detoxifying the small and the large bowel from undigested proteins. Just drinking the water, that's the first thing that needs to be done. The second thing that needs to be done is increase the amount of green food that you're eating from vegetable sources like broccoli or from fruit sources like avocados. Those are my two favorite green foods broccoli and avocados. Well, I have to throw in English cucumbers too as well. They're very, very good. Uh, high alkalinity, very uh, hydrating too as well. Uh, so you've got to change, you've got to make some changes in your diet. You can do this gradually. And, you know, if you're afraid about starting this program and saying, well, geez, I can't give up all this, don't worry about giving up everything. Start beginning the process of alkalizing with the water. Start adding more greens into your diet. And what will happen is these acidic foods will give you up. You don't have to give them up. They'll give you up. You won't want them. You won't crave them anymore. Yeah. And I think this is an important point mm -hmm. to consider. The other thing which is very important, once you're on the alkaline diet, start incorporating liberal amounts of salt, 12 to 14 grams a day. Right. 
Okay, and then the fourth thing is start eating more good, healthy fat. You have to have good, healthy fat to build good, healthy membranes of uh, erythroblasts or stem cells. So you've got to start beginning that process. And then, you know, if you want more details, I'd recommend highly that you buy the PH Miracle Revised and Updated, the new edition, 2010. It is a new book. It's, it's totally rewritten. Yeah. And we've got hundreds of recipes in there, so you know what to eat uh, or what to juice. We've got some juicing recipes in there as well. So Shelley's done a very uh, wonderful job there. Uh, and then in chapter 11 is the whole body, the pH work, the whole body cleanse. Mm -hmm. And it gives you a day-to-day -day protocol of what you need to do mm -hmm. on this program to lose weight, to feel better, to reverse a serious condition, to reverse, let's say, a skin challenge, to improve your eyesight, to make your skin more supple, to put on more muscle, whatever you want to do, yeah. to grow your hair back, whatever it is, mm -hmm. you know, the protocol is there in chapter 11. And you have to begin by improving the health of the core of your body, small and large intestine. That's where health begins. Yeah. And the fifth thing I need to recommend here is you need to begin to exercise. If you don't make time to exercise, then you might want to consider making time to die. Because without exercise, the body's designed to move and to sweat. If you don't exercise on a daily basis, uh, eventually you're going to pay a big price for that. On the exercise you recommend, do you, do you recommend uh, anaerobic or aerobic or a combination? Or oh, a combination. Yeah, you do isotonic uh, to aerobic. Uh, to static contraction, which is isotonic as well, using weights, uh, swimming, bicycling, jogging, yoga. There's so many, so many wonderful forms. You see, the human cell doesn't know what type of equipment that you might be using or type of exercise. It, it, it recognizes the stress. Yeah. That contraction and expansion of the cell, moving acids. You've got to circulate to percolate. If you want more energy, you've got to get things flowing. So I recommend drinking at least one liter per 15 to 20 kilos of weight, but not just any water. We're talking about this alkaline structured water, the pH miracle water. Yeah, yeah. Okay, very good. Um, is, is there anything else about that we haven't covered? Any, any new distinctions that you've made um, over the over the past number of years? We've got this new revised book. Is there something new that's come out that, that you, you've discovered even before? Well, I'm always discovering new things. Uh, you know, the more I work with uh, uh, my client patients, and uh, you know, I deal with very, very serious challenges. But I find out probably the most important ingredient to beginning the process of returning back to the house of health and returning to extraordinary health, energy, and vitality. It all begins with hope, okay. and from hope. You know, if you if you just believe and you have the conviction and you make the commitment to change, the pH miracle is yours. I don't care if it's cancer, diabetes, doesn't matter about the, the condition. Yeah. What matters is you is you have that hope and conviction and commitment to cleaning up the internal environment. Uh, you could call me a uh, an internal environmentalist, bring peace from within. <laughs> cleaning up the internal fluids, the rivers and streams and oceans of the body. Mm -hmm. When you purify them and you then begin the process of building healthy blood, then all things are possible. Because that's where life and death begin. Right. All right, there it is. Yeah, here's the book. Revised and updated. Right. Yeah. Revised updated. That's PH Miracle. Yeah. yeah. And where is the where's the best place to get that? Your, what's your website? Well, you can you can get it on Amazon.com if you want to buy the book, but but our website you can buy it there too as well. It's uh, phmiracle.com, okay. and uh, you know Shelley and I have written over 15 books. Mm -hmm. We're published in 27 different languages. Uh, millions of people are enjoying the benefits of this program. We're here in Spain, and uh, for two reasons: one, because we've had people come from Russia. Uh, from Scotland to England to uh, uh, to du uh, Dubai, uh, people are coming from all over the world, from Hungary, uh, from Italy, and, and, and they're reading this information and they want to embrace, they want to learn so they can embrace 
what they're really truly seeking, which goes beyond riches or money. Mm -hmm. It's what it all comes down to. If you don't have your health well -being, yeah. and well-being, you really don't have much at all. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so this is the blueprint mm -hmm. for extraordinary health, energy, and vitality. We're here in, in, in Spain to establish a clinic to establish a PH Miracle Center in Barcelona, Spain. It's going to uh, rival that in San Diego, where our Rancho del Sol is, where we have a retreat center where people come from all over the world to heal from whatever their, their symptoms are. Yeah. We're going to have this place here in Spain. Uh, we're setting up warehousing here, and this will be a focal point uh, for our European and Eastern European distribution. Uh, we're moving, of course, into China and also Russia as well. And the world is asking for this, and we're just excited that we can now, uh, uh, we have the possibilities and the resources to bring this uh, to the world uh, to make it a better place, you know, uh, to make it a healthier place, to really achieve what all of us are seeking, I believe, and that's joy. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to have joy and happiness if we don't feel good. Mm -hmm. uh, and when we have that health, when we have that joy, uh, you know, then, wow, we've got it all. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you mentioned hope there, and uh, how important it is to have hope. And I see it myself so often is when the person has no hope, then there is no hope because they don't seek out the answers. Well, they die. Yeah. Without hope. Yeah, and because they believe what they've been told by their by their physician or by what the the mainstream has told them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what 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 conditions or what this is has have you seen healed? Is, is there anything that cannot be healed? Is there anything that cannot be reversed, or is everything reversible? Can anything can be healed? Well, it's been said, all things are possible. Yeah to those who believe. Mm -hmm. Belief or conviction, conviction is the beginning step to recovery, uh, regardless of whether it's physical, emotional, or spiritual. Right. You have to believe. Yeah. And when you have the truth, and you have it, you know, millions and millions of examples in over 72 different countries that have actually gone down the pH miracle path that leads, I believe, to life, an extraordinary life of health, energy, and vitality, then, uh, wow, you've got it. You know, and what happens with someone who believes and makes the commitment that that promised pH miracle can happen, uh, every day, a little more energy, every day, feeling a little bit better. Those are the little pH miracles that lead to the reversal of all sickness and disease. Right. Right. Any final words before we finish up? I think I think that was it. Yeah, I think that was but it. But thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, thank you, uh, world, for uh, listening to this and and considering the importance of this message. I can promise you this: that if you apply its principles. It will provide an extraordinary source of energy, vitality, and health. It will change your life, both in its quality and its quantity, too, as well. Awesome. For the good. Awesome. Thank you very much, Dr. Young. Thank you. Thank you for the work you're doing, and thank you for the interview. Appreciate you're it. welcome. Thank you. All the best to you. Thank you. And thank you very much for watching. Uh, make sure you tune in next time and make sure you, uh, you know, take action on what Dr. Young's been talking about today and uh, change your life and change your health. My name is Matthew Armstrong. Take care.